of the many species of animals that inhabit the planet, the inherent dangers of the natural environment that surrounds them is an omnipresent factor that has shaped and will shape their very existence as a species as adaptation to these ever-changing yet ever-present existential risks has been a necessity for every animal species that currently inhabits the earth. Some species, like grizzly bears, an animal I've featured in a previous video on the channel, inhabit the top of the food chain and are armed with sharp claws and teeth and agile frames to help hunt their prey and thick, armor-like skin to aid them when fighting for prey with other competing predators such as wolves, who will typically go out of their way to avoid an encounter with a grizzly bear. I've also covered another apex predator on the channel previously, American alligators, who have been such proficient and successful predators that they've remained physiologically unchanged for millions of years, as is evidenced by recovered fossils. For many other species of animals, in this case, the aforementioned prey, running from predators is a sufficient method of preventing predation. However, other species develop tough and or scaly skin, horns, an unpleasant stench, or toxins to allow them to live their lives while warding off potential predators. The latter are some of the Earth's most fascinating animals as venomous creatures often sport vibrant colored patterns to warn potential predators that making a meal of them will result in both of their deaths. The blue-ringed octopus is a small, relatively rare species of octopus that is found in the warm waters of the southern Pacific and Indian Oceans, making its home in the warm tidal pools and coral reefs of the region. The blue-ringed octopus is quite unassuming in its size, typically ranging in length from 5 to 8 inches. These octopuses are predatorial, with their diet consisting of various crustaceans including hermit crabs, shrimp, and other small crabs. However, despite its miniature size, the blue-ringed octopus has few natural predators thanks to the powerful toxins it carries within it, which it makes known to predators by the blue rings on its body that brighten in color when the octopus feels threatened. These toxins make the blue-ringed octopus one of the planet's most venomous creatures, as the tetrodotoxins they contain are powerful enough to kill 26 adult humans. Interestingly, this toxin is generated by bacteria within the salivary gland of the octopus, creating a tetrodotoxin very similar to the powerful toxins found within pufferfish. The blue-ringed octopus delivers an envenomated bite that is nearly painless and is most often noticed by victims after they begin to feel the effects of the venom now coursing through their veins. These effects include an ever-worsening paralysis, heart failure, nausea, respiratory arrest, and blindness due to the tetrodotoxins blocking of sodium channels, and death can occur from a bite in a matter of mere minutes. One doctor described a victim of a bite stating, quote, The patient held it on the back of the hand for a minute or two, and after putting it down, noticed a speck of blood on his hand. There had been no sensation of a sting or bite. A few minutes later, he felt a prickling sensation around his mouth, which rapidly became generalized, and within 15 minutes, was almost completely paralyzed. The doctor described of the victim who would ultimately survive the ordeal. Furthermore, there is no antivenom available for blue-ringed octopus bites, meaning that bite victims crucially must remove the octopus that is biting them as soon as possible and rush to a nearby hospital where artificial respiration is available to weather the effects of the paralysis and hope for the best as a majority of people that have suffered bites and have survived the first 24 hours after envenomation have gone on to make full recoveries. 
Despite their fearsome reputation as one of the planet's most venomous animals, there are relatively few human encounters with the blue-ringed octopus, as they tend to inhabit deeper tidal pools and reefs rife with places to hide, and their natural range is fairly limited, and thus these potentially lethal creatures seldom end up crossing paths with humans. However, there have been several well-documented human encounters with the blue-ringed octopus where the victims of a bite miraculously survived, or of an unwitting person that manages to handle one while remaining unscathed. But rather strangely, in contrast, there are but a handful of recorded deaths scattered throughout the decades that have been confirmed to have been caused by the blue-ringed octopus, many with rather sparse details or uncertainty surrounding the origin of the victim's condition with online estimates of deaths caused by the cephalopod ranging anywhere from 3 to 11 deaths. And so, I set out to set the record straight as I sought to find every recorded death confirmed to have been conclusively linked to the blue-ringed octopus for you all here in this video. I hope you all enjoy. The first known human death attributed to the blue-ringed octopus took place in Darwin, Australia on September 21st, 1954. That afternoon, a 21-year-old man named Kirk Dyson Holland was spearfishing with a friend at a reef located approximately three miles outside the city of Darwin. As Kirk and his friend fished the bountiful reef, his friend saw what appeared to be a baby octopus measuring approximately 8 inches in diameter nearby and decided to pick it up to use it as bait for fishing. And so, Kirk's friend took the octopus and tossed it onto Kirk's upper back shoulder area for him to take a look at when his hands were free, as at the time, Kirk had his hands full with fishing gear. While the octopus was slung across Kirk's shoulder, it bit him and flung itself off his back, landing back in the reef's waters, where it promptly disappeared from sight. A few minutes after being bitten, Kirk began to feel the effects of the powerful tetrodotoxins, as he complained of intense stomach pains. As the duo reached the beach to seek assistance for Kirk, he collapsed, unable to move any further. Kirk was rushed to a nearby hospital, where he was placed in an iron lung to maintain his ability to breathe. However, unfortunately, despite the best efforts of the hospital's staff, Kirk Dyson Holland would ultimately succumb to the venom's effects, as he died not long after being placed in the iron lung at the hospital. An autopsy of his body revealed a small lump, the bite mark, on his upper back near his spine, although at the time of his death, it was unclear what type of octopus had inflicted this fatal bite. His death would later be formally attributed to the blue-ringed octopus by researchers a decade later in 1964. The next fatality attributed to the blue-ringed octopus would take place over a decade after the first, taking place near Sydney, Australia in 1967. On June 23, 1967, 23-year-old fresh military recruit named James Albert Ward, who was stationed at Watson's Bay for his first day in the military, was on his lunch break when he and two of his fellow recruits decided to explore the tidal pools nearby in Camp Cove. As the three men were exploring the tidal pools, they noticed a small octopus in one of them. Unsure if the octopus was dead in the water or still alive, the men decided to poke the octopus with a stick. As they did so, the octopus sprung to life. The men were highly amused by the small cephalopod and decided to take it back to the barracks to show the other recruits. James took the octopus and set it on his arm, and the men began to make their way back. As the trio ventured their way back towards the base, James began to feel strange 
as his mouth began to go numb, and he was overcome with an overwhelming urge to vomit, but was unable to do so. James attempted to pull the octopus off of his arm, but was unable to, as the creature had latched onto his skin. The two other men managed to break its hold on James's arm and tossed it aside, hurriedly prompting James to continue onwards towards the base. James only managed to stagger another 10 meters across the beach before he became fully paralyzed by the effects of the venom and collapsed. James's comrades rushed for help at the base, and James was then evacuated to the Army Medical Center. However, unequipped to deal with such an envenomation, he was further transferred to Prince Henry Hospital at Little Bay, where he was placed on an artificial resuscitation machine. However, despite this, James Albert Ward would succumb to the effects of the venom 90 minutes after the initial bite and 45 minutes after his admission into the hospital. An autopsy of his body found no noticeable injuries or bite marks at all. The next death attributed to the blue-ringed octopus would take place in Singapore on the evening of September 13, 1986, at East Coast Park. That evening, a six-year-old boy named Lee Wo Wen was exploring the shallow waters when he noticed a small octopus. As the young boy noticed the octopus, he excitedly pursued it, finally catching it within his hands. After scooping up the octopus in his hands and playing with it for a few minutes, six-year-old Li Wo Wen began to suffer the effects of the tetrodotoxins and soon collapsed in a state of full paralysis. The boy was rushed to the hospital for medical treatment for the bite. However, he would die not long after his admission into the hospital. An autopsy of his body revealed the presence of tetrodotoxins and his skin showed no signs of obvious injury, which strongly suggested that he had been bitten by a blue-ringed octopus, which have been known to inhabit Singapore's waters. Lee Wo Wan's death would mark the final documented death that has been conclusively attributed by experts to the blue-ringed octopus's bite, as modern medical ventilators, in combination with better awareness of the species' lethality, have managed to reduce encounters with them from tragic fatalities to near brushes with death. Thank you all for watching.